All right, time for some more ill logic. Last time we went over our week three match against the Route One Burbs. Please go check out that video first if you've not done so already. As we went over the team builder and battle in which, spoiler alert, the Buffalo Buffont got back in the win column against the Burbs. A 5-0 win thanks to consistent play from Goldengo and Talonflame, an outstanding Scarf Slitherwing, and a belly drum sweep from Azumarill. That brings our record up to 2-1 with a plus 10 differential going into our week 4 matchup against Matt and his Cincinnati Incineroar. Timestamps will be in the description. Matt was a powerhouse early in the Wooper Club League with us needing some crucial luck to beat him in the Season 2 playoffs, dropping to him in Season 3, and beating him in the regular season and finals in Season 4. That finals match was crazy. Scarf Seismitoad got the early KO on his Cinderace, then his Ninetales came in without drought. Since then, it seems as though he's been on a bit of a downturn, including big losses to us in Season 6 thanks to Dragapult, 8 thanks to Nidoking, 9 thanks to Parish Song Politoed, and 10 thanks to Clawitzer. He's been starting to accumulate a few more big wins recently, though, including a W over the Noctowls last season, and a 6-0 win earlier this season using only one Mon. He has a few Mons that can do that this time, as his team is actually extremely threatening to mine, I think. Meowskarada is up there at the top, followed by Palmot, Espathra, Palafin, which cannot Terra, Seraledge, Orthworm, which cannot Shedtail, Sylveon, Donphan, Rabska, Fortress, and the 6-0 beast itself, Garganachi. Look at this ridiculous team, man. Our Spathra and Garganachi win games by themselves. Palafin and Meowskarada are super strong with speed and pivoting. Donphan, Orthrow, and Fortress form a bizarre trio of overlap that allows Mac to pick the best of them each week. Double Revival Blessing? Truly bizarre. Let's look at what we're dealing with this week in particular. Probably not Rabska. The bug does have Revival Blessing, but is 50% of another Mon truly worth 100% of this one, which frankly doesn't do much? Goldengo is a hard stop. Azumarill destroys it. Slithering absolutely loves a free U-turn or first impression. Talonflame and Gastro eat it up. Lycanroc and Arcanine don't care. It's just not very good aside from that one move. Next up with Shedtail Band, I think Orthworm is pretty clearly the worst of the Hazard Setters format. No removal, no real great coverage outside of Body Press, Stab, and EQ, and thus the general inability to touch multiple big threats of mine means I have no concern about what it's trying to do. It's somewhat similar to Fortress, though Fortress could at least wall up a bit on a zoom roll and volt switch out and spin and set up a different kind of hazard too. However, being susceptible to ground and even more so to fire with a couple of good looking fire types on my team for the matchup, plus a couple of ones that easily beat or chip at 1v1 and easy hazard removal from mine side means it probably doesn't make an appearance. There's a good shot for each of these last eight to come actually, and this is going to get pretty tough. Going for what I think think may happen, I could see Sarah Ledge staying behind here. I have a great answer in Arcanine, plus Talonflame, Azumarill, and Gastron all seem like at least decent answers. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend like it's easy. Two stabs to hit Goldango, tons of power, a weak armor and or weakness policy away from sweeping, nothing I want a part of. Finally then, I guess it could be Sylveon? I am pretty afraid of it, but maybe Goldango will be enough to dissuade him, unless it's Terra Fire, but it's tough to give that Terra to anything but Garganackle. Azu could probably blow it up. Arcanine and Talonflame resist all its moves, and I think I've been known to play around Wish pretty well, but I didn't expect Florges to come last time either, and Sylveon is just a better Florges for the most part, so who knows? We will soon, but I also know I need to be worried about that Garganachi. I, I, I wouldn't actually be the biggest surprise in the world if he were to leave it behind this week, considering Goldengo with Covert Cloak is one of the more obvious checks that exist in Pokemon to this Mon. But it's also the Mon he won with 6-0, and I don't think anyone in the other leagues have been inclined to leave it behind yet either. It has been the prime Terra candidate all the way around as well for anyone that has it. I have a couple answers, as I said. Goldengo, Wochen, Azumarill, maybe even Avalug, maybe even Slitherwing. But those checks often change when it goes Terra, and depending on the defensive boost or even just regular defensive investment. Goldengo will struggle to hit a steel-resisting Terra type as it already naturally resists Ghost with its ability. Wo Chen would be sick having to face Grass. Azu, Azu can't handle Grass or Water Terra. Avila crumbles to boosted Body Press or so. Slitherwing, isn't, if it isn't weak to CC, it really doesn't beat it either. I think I'm landing on Water as the most likely Terra, mostly for Goldengo and Azu, and so that Ground isn't added on as a weakness, like with something like Fire, Electric, or Steel. I think Matt's smart enough to know about the Goldengo with Covert Cloak being a stalwart in front of Garg and probably brings that Curse EQ Salt Cure Recover set, so my intentions are to play around that one in particular. And if it's not, Goldengo should just beat it. Either way, I think we can play around it, but we've got plenty of prep that we need to have ready for it, and if it doesn't come, that would be a little bit devastating. Very similar is the Espathra, who really can just win from nowhere, even if we have a couple pretty good answers to it. Wo Chen is our immunity, with Goldengo as resist. 
past that, uh, it's not all doom and gloom. Lots of priority help out a ton for the speed boosting Egyptian ostrich, and enough offensive pressure, especially on the physical side, could stop it from setting up calm mind boosts at least. I suspect Terra Fire would be the play here to hit both of my psychic resist immunity super effectively, but again, it's tough to call anything but Garganachi using Terra. After that, Dawnfan is the spinner and setter I'm most scared of, despite the worst matchup of the 3-2 Azu. The other two don't even hit Azu hard, though at least Fortress could Volt switch out on a prediction, where EQ on the switch is terrifying. The physical bulk and power of EQ is a great complement to the rest of his team against mine, kinda terrifying if I let him swing away or hit with coverage options like Ice Spinner against Chump. Palmot is next. Yeah, a defensive set with Rest Talk would be awful to deal with in reviving many teammates, but I'm actually more concerned with something like Punching Glove. It outspeeds almost my whole team, has great coverage options for most of them, and threatens just raw damage anyways. We're very tough to switch into and deal with offensively rather than defensively. I may have to let mods go down to this just to stop Revival Blessing, but that could result in some KO'd teammates of my own. Meow Scarada also outspeeds almost my whole team, although the team overall on his side is pretty slow, hence why a lot of the biggest threats are there at the top of the speed stats. Uh, but Meow Scarada also seems free to U-turn around or click the very limited in distribution now knockoff to ruin most of my counterplay. It can even set up spikes if I'm not careful and give it those free turns. My physical walls aren't great, and some of my bulkiest mons are weak to its stabs and U-turn. Real good matchup for it, I think. Though, the top of the chart's gotta be Palafin. Scarfed out speed everything, banned to two at KO even the resists, bulk up and taunt to stop my counterplay. Aside from Terra, it's got it all, and a couple of my very best checks struggle with many of his other top options. It's a well-constructed top of his roster, with Palafin the King Jewel that he's dying to use properly this week. On my end, it's a shame after its debut was cut short by an immediate double, but Lycanroc does not look like it's having any fun here at all. Meow outspeeds Palafin as priority, Palm out resists Rock as Spothra outspeeds after one speed boost, Saralich likes weak armor, Dawn fan walls completely, and CC in Dugarg is likely to be teared out of. Not to mention I'm expecting the EQ set anyways, so no. Slitherwing is a bit of a tragic tale here too. It's probably my best answer to Meow Scarada, plus first impression looks relatively spammable, but not enough. Palmot, Saraledge, Sylveon, and Dawnfan all swap in pretty freely, not to mention Garganachi tearing out of the fighting weakness again. Even as Pothra hits super effectively with stored power, doesn't even need a calm mind boost to KO after a couple speed boosts. Even Palafin outspeeds and hits Slytherin on the more frail physical side. Unfortunate, but no bug here. Next, it's going to be a first for me in Season 12, but I am going to leave Talonflame behind. The reliable defog and fast threat would be nice, and it would be another great Mouse Garada answer too, but it's once again walled reliably by everything else. Palafin has priority before I can burn it, Palmod outtrades as Spothra outspeeds after a moment, Dawnfan doesn't care aside from a burn, and Garganachi laughs at it all day long. Close, but not quite. Toxtricity does have some use here, either Scarf or Shift Gear would have been kinda neat, and actually does outspeed most of his team even without a boost, but it doesn't seem like it's enough. Garganachi again laughs at it unless it is Terra Water, Palafin outspeeds or just hits with Jet Punch, and Saraledge is generally bulky while being immune to Boom Burst. I mean, that was a weird case too with the speed and knockoff. Palma can soak up a non-boom burst, as can Dawnfan, and Aspothra could see Tox as a setup opportunity depending on the set and spread, though Snarl was actually kind of an interesting thought I had too. Finally, it's kind of weird to say that this as it's my water immunity, but Gastrodon's riding the bench again. Terra Ghost sounds so funny to invalidate the pal standard Palafin sets, which will run maybe a water move or two plus Drain Punch. But past that, the utility is actually very questionable, especially if it's going to need to take my Terra for that fighting coverage, and it just doesn't quite have the physical bulk that I'm looking for. I need to Terra out of the typing for Meow and Garganachi super effectively, not to mention coverage from Dawnfan or Saraledge, plus Palma I can hit with one stab or the other depending on Terra, plus Sylveon doesn't really care about it, and it looks a little too much like setup bait. I think we can plan for Palafin and others with a couple mons that have a little more utility depending on the team that's brought. This was actually a pretty tough one to prep for, I have to say, but at least Goldango is always reliable. Covert Cloak is a must into the matchup, outside of Gark and Aquilet's use is questionable, but may help against something like Ice Punch, maybe. Stabs should be pretty obvious, reliability from Shadow Ball and power from Make It Rain, with Recover to make sure I can beat something like Garganachi or Palafin 1v1, and T-Bolt as the coverage move. Nasty Pot seemed interesting, but wasn't really too useful, except maybe something like a boosting Sylveon, where T-Bolt hits the Palafin, and more importantly, a Terra Water Garganachi. I'm anticipating that water, as the Garg set should be, again, the Cursed Earthquake set, with a Terra to resist Steel, in order to try and beat this. 
I guess, is water, is fire, electric, and steel are still weak to ground from guard chomp. Don't really provide anything additional compared to also resisting Azu's liquidation. Finally, Terra Grass is the uh, option here for me. If I'm hard guessing that set, flying would be good, of course, especially if body press were to come, but Grass does still resist EQ while not taking a quarter from just Sulk here, which is a bit much. With this, I'm only fearing a boosting body press, but still at least forcing body press to beat me, in which case I may still just straight up win the 1v1 with this with T-Bolt and that max special attack investment, or potentially with my other answer in Wo Chen. Wo Chen with the Water Terra or not, uh, Wo Chen will beat the Garg thanks to a neat status move that does defeat it. It is Leech Seed. I thought that was pretty neat. Ruination was a consideration for keeping it low as well. Actually also was spite for taking away several recovers, but this thing is already built to destroy Garg, so I think it's all good. Knockoff is the immediately spammable move to stop Meow from coming in freely for U-turn. Giga Drain, of course, to beat this and probably Palafin, and complements the physical bulk against those two in particular. It's a, weird, a little weird, potentially, to uh, from double up on the all this physical defense yet again, considering Tablets of Ruin already lowers physical defense, but again, I'm not exactly the most physically bulky, and if you didn't notice, a lot of his biggest threats are those physically bulky Mons, and so I wanted to make sure I could compound on that to beat those. Uh, last move here is Protect to stall with Leech Seed and lefties, as well as two scout choice items, and a strange typing here for defensive Mon. Uh, we got the psychic typing for our Terra. I want to make sure I take advantage of my dark typing here. Knockoff always breaks the spot through a sub and makes me mean to stored power, but I also want to be able to turn the tables on a couple of other Mons, particularly to beat Body Press Garganachi along with Drain Punching Palafin, Close Combating Palmot, or Body Pressing Donphan. The typing that resists fighting while still resisting the psychic from Spothra is strangely enough a psychic itself it flips some matchups unexpectedly palafin isn't going for water over fighting move palmot is not going for electric over fighting seraledge is not going for ghost over fire so there's actually quite a bit of utility here i just have to make sure that unlike week one i don't get stuck on this being my primary terra option while still recognizing the times wherein it can turn the tide on a particular matchup anyways one mod i don't have to worry about for that is Garchomp, who cannot Terra, but that is what it is, and maybe Wo Chen's best friend here for being my number one switch in to Meowskarada. I could see protective pads actually, and I'm obviously susceptible to knockoff, but we're trying to rack up some damage on the cat via chip damage this time from the rough skin and rocky helmet. That's pretty simple. Uh, Spikes is the hazard of choice this time as he has zero mons off the ground, which also does make EQ very spammable unless Orthworm comes. If it does Fire Blast 2, it KOs that, as well as Meow and Fortress, at least bring it to its sturdy. EQ is spammable otherwise. Dragon Tail to drag his mons around if his opponent gets the chance and enough speed for Palafin to at least force a hit off first before going down and probably getting that 29% recoil chip onto that too. Garchomp looks destined to go down, but let's see if we can do some damage before that happens. Speaking of damage, though, you already know we gotta bring back the Azumarill, and while Belly Drum was actually really tempting again, I did decide to go a slightly different direction here. Between Salt Cure, Meow, Speed, and Resistances, and the same for Palafin, especially after I saw some of Banded Palafin's calcs against me. Oh my goodness, that thing's a beast. I decided it would be best to try and go a different route that gets me some immediate damage. Choice Band for the third straight week on a different Mon yet again. I think we're seeing a pattern for the type of game I've been playing this season. But yes, Aqua Jet from plus one attack will chunk everything. And with the band, Liquidation should be two at KOing all but the most sturdy resists and max defense Fortress. My favorite part of this is how little I care about most of the return damage I'd be taking. Liquidation chunks, player off chunks, superpower is actually a really cool spammable move for some of his best switch-ins. We've got just enough speed for his base 60s, including Sylveon in particular, which actually matches Wu Chen's uninvested relaxed speed strangely enough. Water is pretty standard to Terra type, get power on the Aqua Jet if needed, as my only priority this week. Yeah, I'm a little concerned that my team is actually pretty slow this time around. Garchomp is the fastest, not bringing the Town Flame, not bringing the Lycanroc, and is still outsped by three of his team members that Garchomp is actually. And I'm not even bringing Gastrodon as a tank, but I'm interested to see how this type of comp performs. Additionally though, we've got the final two debuts to judge. The first of which we'll be going over is Arcanine. Actually didn't even have a fire move on it at first, but decided to replace Close Combat, which could have been used for Meow and Garganachi, I suppose. But Flare Blitz gives me a better answer to Sylveon as well as Fortress, plus just a more spammable stab move if needed. Will-O-Wisp is relatively spammable anyways, but those two moves do put more pressure on my Garganachi checks like Wo Chen, as it makes that it can swap in on this set pretty much for free. But the main point of the set really is 
is for Serilage, though. With Flashfire, we shut down his main offensive option of Bitterblade and can about always two hit KO back with Crunch. Sword Stance with something like Close Combat would be pretty scary, actually, especially with the Terra Dark, but so long as he doesn't follow up with the Terra, we should be able to handle it. Morning Sun for Longevity, the boots for safety, and that Terra Dark plus Crunch means we're actually a really good sneaky as Pothra answer in a pinch too. I shouldn't be attracting coverage options like Dazzling Gleam or Terra Fire, of course it'd be stored power. And if we can immune that while getting off a hit with Terra Dark Crunch, we are golden to get back into the game. Wish I could have found room for Extreme Speed too, but I like the idea of burning the switch ins like Palafin or Donphan, so hopefully we made the right choice there. Finally, the last debut of the season, only halfway through, I did choose Avalog to come this week as another physical tank. Each of Matt's first six picks has an attack stat of at least 100, and with Serilege being the only guaranteed threat among those, Avalog seems poised to tank those hits and spin if needed. Hazard stacking is a bit of a concern, especially if Meow or Fortress starts setting up some weird stuff, so I felt it a necessity. Body Press means we threaten most of his team, including Garganachi pre-Terra, thanks to a bit of speed investment. Recover, of course, and then Ice Spinner for a reliable stab over Avalanche, which also means that I can break the Spothra Substitute every single time. I don't need the extra power as much as being able to do that. It gives me some kind of punish for not having immediate stab. Water seemed like a pretty good Terra here. It means I could do significantly better against Serilege too, especially if that's his Terra and I could actually hit it, as well as Tank Palafin hits even better too, though Salt Cure will hit us harder. Otherwise, with Boots, I feel pretty good about this mod. That's going to be the team. Let's see what Matt has in store for us. Serilege is missing. Great news for Avalog and less so for Arcanine. But the big surprise is no Palafin! That Gastrodon saying behind is looking like a pretty smart decision right about now. Two of its best matchups aren't even here, and that's great. Sylveon is here instead, that makes a ton of sense, as I mentioned I wasn't sure you'd find room. But for Palafin? Okay. Lead matchup. I'm anticipating probably Meowscarada, maybe Donphan? What do I have for that? Azu for Donphan, Garfan, Garchomp for the Meow. Uh, what's Arcanine doing this matchup? I think it's more likely Meow leads, as Donphan is also a spinner, so let's try it with that. Good luck, have fun too, Matt. It is the Meow Scarada. We're getting better at this, it seems. Maybe. Well, turn one, and I already wish I'd kept the close combat. Gargadacle seems pretty likely. Well, I could Flare Blitz, but if I anticipate the switch, no shot. I'm actually going to execute the plan for Meow. Right now, I'm going to swap to Garchomp turn one, and strangely enough, he's going to hard switch two, and this one to Gargadacle. Uh, not going to risk the U-turn, that's fine. We've got a favorable matchup anyways. If I can just click EQ, I think I'm probably fine with that and see what he's got because this is a free move. Terra Ghost, interesting. That makes Wu Chen an even better answer, actually. And Arcanine's Dark Typing looks even better, too. And Goldango can still make it rain pretty freely this matchup. Azu can still Liquidation, too. Well... This turn you saw EQ only does 20% and Iron Defense comes out. It's not the curse set. Okay, that way that may make the Goldango play even easier. May also mean that I don't need to Terra the Goldango, which would be very, very helpful. I think I can get away with the Goldango play right now then, right? I think I can. Salt Cure comes out. I take a whole 6%. Perfect. And depending on the investment, I'd like to see how much Shadow Ball does, but... Uh, I guess I could take an EQ back, and if I take it, I take it. I'd rather know now and force a recover to get Wo Chen or something in safely. Maybe I could tear the Wo Chen then, or we can avoid all of this if he's scared out by the Goldango. Palmot is in, and he's going to take a whopping 87% from the Shadow Ball. That's huge damage. This is a mon I was very worried about being able to take down before it took down my team, so that's perfect. Now then, what to do here? I need to keep Goldango around. It, this thing beats the Garg among several other things. Probably would like to be able to use this to chunk any switch in with the Ghost move. This should be, be able to beat the Sylveon too, especially because that thing is not going to be able to tear a fire. So that's a couple lines this thing beats straight up. So I think I need to keep it around, uh, which is important enough. I, as for Palmat, I think if he wants to take this out, he ought to be clicking the electric move. No shot, he clicks Ice Punch. And if he does, we KO him back with a helmet because I think Garchomp is going to be in the house here. Uh, if he hits me with anything but the electric move, we can KO him back, but he doesn't, so we immune it, and that is also great. Next up, either he's locked in or he's going for a different move. Revival Blessing is out right now, so what's next? Ice Punch seems pretty obvious, which he probably should have, considering... I think I'm going to go with an option that provides for an option next turn as well, and that's going to be to double out into Azumarill. Is Ice Punch freeze? No, thank goodness, and we got away with that easy. As for this turn, 
He could obviously go for double shock again, maybe worried about me setting up with the belly drum or swap into a sturdy water resist. If he swaps, that's honestly fine, as water resists are looking a little bit limited right now, probably just a meow then I'd be winning the damage war here anyways from those two plays. I think it's way more noteworthy to try to take this out first, both as an offensive threat and something that I can't even click Revival Blessing this turn. Aqua Jet, KO, and we are up 6-5. to five. That is a great start all the way around. We're very healthy here too, and we've also revealed the Garganacle Terra as Ghost, so I'd say we're pretty far ahead right now. Though Meow Scarada will come out next, and that makes a whole lot of sense to try to force me out. Execute the plan. I'm just going to go into Garchomp like I wanted to previously. And we're going to see if we can get some damage onto it. U-turn will absolutely chunk 42%. That's choice band for sure. Look at all the recoil damage though. And land in on the Espothra. That's pretty interesting there actually. Uh, and what a crazy mon. It's out early and if it's Dazzle and Gleam, obviously I'm in trouble. I'd love to use Garchomp to get up hazards, but Dawnfan is still out there actually. Dragon moves, Sylveon's out there, Fire Blast isn't really needed, more chip on Meow, maybe. Actually, with us knowing the item, we should be able to take full advantage of that. What is my use for Garchomp then? At this moment, it should now be to prevent the Espothra sweep because this is what is in front of me. Even without investment, you know Earthquake is going to chip, so I'm going to stay he in here on an Earthquake. And actually, I'm going to get the crit on the Calm Mind, so that's kind of crazy. Sorry about the hacks there. We also learned a couple very interesting things. I did outspeed it, which means it is not speed invested, but also look at the damage roll here. Without the crit, 84%. Without the crit, that's a 58% damage roll. I respect Garchomp's damage, but what? This implies actually no bulk investment. This is Pothra is built to boost once and go off. And that is very helpful for me using Terra to take advantage of this. Probably with Arcanine using Crunch, but with the crit, it may also be an range of Aqua Jet now too. Great job. I think it's just time to EQ again to stop any more cheeky setup and maybe get a free switch in afterwards too. That seems to be the best play to me. Or maybe I could over predict, go for the Shadow Ball against Goldengo. And then we survive the plus one hit, EQ KOs back six to four. I obviously am going to need to address the hacks right now then. Without the crit, 58% damage roll. After lefties, it's at 48% then overall. Obviously with, within range of another one, even with protect, it'd be at 54%. But we didn't see protect this turn either. Maybe it was an aggressive lead, but let's look at the moveset a little bit. Call mind for setup, yeah. Shadow ball for coverage, okay. No shot, stored power is not on the set. What's the last move then? Well, Wo Chen walls that's at 1,000%, so it's got to be Dazzling Gleam or Terra Blast, right? Okay, so where's Protect? Without the crit, he wouldn't even be able to protect for that extra health. All this may have done was get him to overpredict, but that's my opponent's action, not mine. I'm calling this one as clean. No foul on the crit. Let's try and get the hex later when it matters, yeah? Oh well, for now, it is actually going to be Meow as the revenge tool as his last mon that outspeeds Garchomp that's up. I don't want to overpredict this, and as nice as it would be to go for the clean 6-0, Garchomp did his job. You deserve a good rest, buddy. We're going to give a parting gift of another 28% here to get this Meow dangerously low after all of that. However, with the move choice being knockoff, we have a few key resists here, in particular with me being confident he's locked in. Actually, Azumarill isn't fearing anything right now. In fact, I should be able to claim a KO right now as well. Even without a resistance, even knockoff taking my band will save, well, let's save uh, Meow this turn. Otherwise, liquidation should be two at killing literally everything else he's got. Garganachi, I've got some bad news. I don't think that was the play. Take over 50%. That Garchomp chip from turn two may actually be very relevant on that one, depending on rolls and investments. One more liquidation, and this one actually going into Sylveon doing a nice percentage to that. I don't need to stop clicking buttons yet. Even if Sylveon outspeeds me, which it doesn't, I wouldn't mind taking that hit to get the threat, the KO on this threat. Uh, that's five to three. And as always, that means that Meow is going to be back in. And I'm out of Rocky Helmet, Rough Skin, Abusers, all one of them. Let's get that last guy in here then, yeah? Uh, it's going to pretty obviously be a flower trick. Stab, always crits, boosted by a choice band. 32%, easy, the way I see it. We both know uh, that's max damage from him. I think he knows it's unlikely he stays in. And if he does, Ice Spinner KO's body press probably will too, or it would be pretty close. Recover would help me stay healthy here. Most importantly, though, I could double out. His last two mons are weak to a mon I have that tanks Flower Trick even better. So let's just double into Wo Chen as he's going to also swap out into Dawn Fan. Uh, body press is a little bit concerning. 
as it would be hazards potentially, but it really isn't going to do too much overall. I'm just going to click Giga Drain. That is an assault vest for sure, and play rough misses. Uh, let, let's look at just a little bit. Max attack adamant does 30 to 35 after lefties and protect. It's closer to 20% overall. Sucks, but as of right now, probably not too important. Uh, with the AV, he avoids the 2 hit KO, so I think we need to make sure we threaten some other mons here uh, with the knockoff, which will also ensure that the next Giga Drain KO's little damage is good. And play rough miss uh, again. It's only doing 20% after protecting lefties, and then with this final Giga Drain, it'd be pretty close to full, but man, that, that still sucks for Matt. I don't think the misses mattered, but as someone who has lost a game to play rough missing this season, and someone who lost a game thanks in part to two consecutive Poltergeist missing in a row, I can empathize here uh, with the Salt. It gets worse for him, too, as Meowskrat is going to come in and free to click a button, or would be if I didn't have Protect. Flower Trick trying to catch the switch. Oh no, I've got some bad news, friend. You're locked in. You're switching in case of Giga Drain or something, but Knockoff's still pretty safe anyways, and that'll KO the now Ghost Garganachi, who goes into the dirt as a real ghost now. And with Meow the only one left, we get to choose the last KO depending on the move. We're going to click Protect on the U-turn. Guess Wochan can't steal the show entirely. I have a couple great bug resists, but if we're talking about giving a KO, it's got to be the newly minted KO leader, Azumarill. Tank a couple of U-turns here, and with it as a bug typing liquidation for Azu's third KO of the match, 10th overall, and temporarily making it the leader in both conferences right there with Jimmy's Great Tusk, and that will wrap up the 5-0 win over the Incineroar. GG to Matt, ch chatting afterwards, it seems like this match may not have been a top priority for him. He may have forgotten the Palafin, and he may have had Stealth Rock on his Assault Fist Dawn fan. Still, I respect Matt as a battler. Good luck to him in the squad that's been traveling around to competitive events. Hope you avoid those Don Dozo mirrors. Not too much to talk about after the match. It's a shame that for the second consecutive week, a Mon debuted by appearing for free and then switching out immediately. But maybe I don't want my doggos in harm's way. Just think about that. Avlog was solid in the one thing it did. Goldengo the same. And Wochen cleaning up was pretty cool. Glad to see it's KD in the positive. As mentioned too, Azu's 10th KO gives it the temporary KO lead in both leagues. It was already tied at the top of our league, but with three more this week, we're trying to get that insurmountable lead. That said, despite being the only KO'd mod team and only one KO, I think it'd be worth it to give Garchomp the MVP this week for all the chip on Meow, the meaningful chip on Garganachi, the safe pivot into and out of Palmot, and KOing a Spothra on its own to stop that sweep. No Terra again this week. That's entirely because Garchomp did what it did offensively and defensively. Glad to see it. And that'll do it from me this week. Entering our week five by actually, we are now three and one with a plus 15 differential by merit of a 0-1 loss to Hacks, a 6-0, a 5-0, and a 5-0. We're on a roll right now in second place here, just behind the undefeated Seattle Steamrollers. And in week six, we've got another favorable matchup here against the currently winless Mighty Mill Tanks before our schedule gets a little rough on the home stretch. Playoffs are within sight now. We've got two mods nearer at the top of the KO leaderboards. And we are cooking right now. Let's keep it rolling. See ya.